This is the fundamental question of philosophy, according to Albert Camus at least. And for one, you can't really get around this question. You have to answer it. We are, in fact, all of us answering it right now. Since today, for some reason, we chose that yes, life is worth living. It might seem provocative to ask this question, but it gets to the core of what philosophy is about. Some dead Greek guy once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. According to this view, you can either use reason and try figure out what the point of living is, or you can just live from day to day like some animal never truly questioning the things you do and why you do them. Let's try something. Imagine yourself way ahead in the future, facing death and looking back on who you were today. Are you satisfied with what you see? What would you be satisfied with? What kind of life would make you find peace in your final moments, knowing nothing will truly matter anymore in a couple of minutes? Or will it matter? Do the things you do and their value transcend your life? Actually, does it even matter what you will think in your final moments? Is there something more important than inner peace and happiness? Is that thing the point of life? That's some questions to think about and getting some of the answers is the whole point of philosophy. What kind of life should I live? Or as Aristotle, another dead Greek guy would ask, what is the good life? These questions fall under the domain of ethics. Ethics pose the most fundamental questions of life, but as a discipline, it can't really stand for itself. What do I mean by that? How you are going to answer these questions is going to depend on what you believe about the world. For example, whether you believe that your consciousness will disperse and death will bring pure nothingness to you, or you believe that your soul will wake up to a new eternal life, this will make a difference in how you are going to view the point of life. I mean, if you want happiness and you believe that abiding some specific set of rules will get you to eternal heaven, you'll have a quite different answer to these questions than someone who believes that death is the ultimate end. So how you're going to answer the fundamental questions of life depends on what you believe about the world. So in other words, there's another question to be answered. What is the world like? What exists? This question falls under the domain of ontology, the study of what exists, and metaphysics, which deals with abstract concepts such as being, identity, space, and time. But as you might note, these questions too are dependent on something else. Imagine I said the point of life is eating as much potato as possible. Okay, you ask, why? Well, I say, there's a theory that for every potato you eat, you get a hundred years extra in the potato version of heaven. If I said that, you would probably ask me why I would believe in such a thing. And I would have to lay out some of the reasons why I do. I would have to present evidence and arguments why I think that my theory is correct. So, how I'm going to answer the questions of how to live life and what exists depends on how I'm going to answer the following one. What can I know and how do I know it? This falls under the domain of logics and epistemology. Logics in the most general sense is the science of rational thinking and epistemology is the study of knowledge. All of this taken together is philosophy. It tries to answer the questions that we posed in a rational way, even though we all have some sort of answer already. The problem is, you really, really don't want to be wrong when you answer these questions. Imagine you waste your whole life living in a certain way just because you believe in the things that you uncritically accepted in your childhood, only much later recognizing them as being flawed. Imagine yourself not living the good life because instead your whole life was built around following the norms of society, impressing others, gaining social status, buying stuff you don't need working shifts you wouldn't really have to. Imagine being hateful towards whole groups of people because of prejudice and bias. Imagine one of the people that are close to you suddenly finding themselves in such a group. Imagine yourself wanting health and happiness but you only listen to charlatans for advice, people who only want to sell you their books full of nonsense. 
Philosophers want to get rid of false beliefs, critically examine them and get some better, more reliable claims about knowledge, about the world, about life. In that way, we can look at philosophy as trying to answer the fundamental questions of life, but also recognizing that going around answering them is much more complex than it would seem. Philosophers are experts at taking these questions apart, examining all of the assumptions that the question is hiding, questioning the validity of the concepts that form the question, questioning our reason and capability to answer such questions and questioning whether a question is even legitimate in the first place. Just remember the famous answer the almighty computer gave in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when asked what the meaning of life is. 42. If we don't ask the right questions, we won't get the right answers. Maybe this video didn't pose the right questions, maybe it seems absurd to ask whether life is worth living. Perhaps because the answer is taken for granted and maybe it should be taken for granted. But then we can ask what makes life worth living? What is the thing that gives meaning to our lives? As philosophers we want to critically examine it. And hopefully when the day comes, die with no regrets. And that's the point of philosophy. We want to answer the questions of life, but we can't really do that in isolation. There's a whole web of beliefs about the world and about knowledge that we have to examine first. So that's why we need epistemology, logics, ontology, metaphysics and all of that that together form philosophy. And only as a whole we can tackle the big questions of life. So, what do you think about this picture of philosophy? Let me know in the comments, I would love to have a discussion. Thank you for watching, if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe and that's it for now, bye!